Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My sister-in-law forced her son into competing with my daughter. But now I'm standing up for Lara and demanding an apology. I, female 35, am blessed with a beautiful daughter Lara, female 8, and she's the best thing that's happened to me. I'm a single mom and my family is a part of my support system, and they also make my daughter feel loved and happy. She has a lot of cousins who are basically her siblings and uncles and aunts who dote on her because she is friendly and well-mannered. We also live in a more rural area so kids still play outside and hang out in the community park and they have these smaller networks without too many online friends. However, my sister-in-law Sandra, 37, has never warmed up to me, or my daughter. She makes everything between me and her into a competition and has even tried to passive-aggressively bring her son Tony, male 7, into the whole competition. It always shows up in tiny little ways like if I get a promotion at work she belittles the industry I work in, or if Lara does something cute or impressive she tries to go oh Tony did XYZs and did it better. The two kids go to the same school and the talent show was organized on the 4th of July and Lara played her recorder. Tony didn't participate because he was unwell but Sandra was constantly making these little jibes that Lara's playing even though she's literally eight and playing hot cross buns. A week later she sent a video on the family group chat of Tony playing the same thing on a piano. I don't know how to bring this up with her because she skirts around being openly hostile and her husband, my brother, has confided in me that she's found trouble fitting into our big family network. I kind of see it because sister-in-law and my brother met in college and she's from a different part of the country. Despite all of this, I don't hold any grudges against her or Tony because I'm trying to be understanding and I mean Tony's just a little kiddo. For the last few days, Lara's mood has changed drastically. Usually she's a little ball of sunshine, but there's something a little off about her energy. She doesn't want to go to the park as much and sometimes even makes up excuses to not go to school. I've always had her confide in me about everything that goes on with her and her friends and she's always chatty after a day at school. She shuts off now and just does her own thing or acts skittish when I ask her about her day. She isn't as active at family gatherings either and holds herself up in a room instead of hanging out with her cousins and running around in the backyard like she used to do. I wanted to get to the root of the problem, but I didn't want to pressure her either. So I took her to McDonald's and an amusement park one day just as a way for us to bond and let her know that she could tell me whatever she had on her mind, even if she felt like it was a bad thing. I guess this must have made her feel safe enough to tell me what was going on because she ended up telling me that Tony has been mean and aggressive the past few days. I was shocked because up until now Tony's always been good friends with Lara since they're both almost the same age and the rest of the cousins are a bit older and they're always hanging out together whenever my brother's family visits me or vice versa. I hate to admit it, but I thought that Lara might have been lying to deflect from some other issue, and this was the first thing that popped into her mind. I told her to tell me what Tony was doing to make her feel bad and she refused to tell me anything after that point. I shrugged off this idea and I assumed that something else was behind Lara's behavior. I took her home and let her know that I can help her out. I didn't think it could be anything related to Tony because such a little kid wouldn't be able to bring Lara down like this. Later on I visited my parents for barbecue and the kids had gone off and were doing their own thing. Sister-in-law was there as well. I noticed that Tony was hanging out with his other cousins but not with Lara. He still wasn't doing anything mean but this did make me a little suspicious. I decided to kind of snoop around a bit and I saw a coloring book in the living room that the school had given to everyone in Lara's grade as part of some wellness initiative. Lara hadn't brought hers with her, so I assumed it was Tony's. I was curious about the drawings and I kind of opened them very innocently, because I wanted to see what Tony drew. He had a bit of an artistic reputation within the family. Sister-in-law at least sends all his work on the group chat, and to be honest, they are quite good. I flipped through and I noticed that on the inside of the back cover there was a bunch of handwriting and lists there, and it clearly wasn't the work of a seven-year-old going over it. I saw that it was things like Cousin Lara isn't from a real family, Cousin Lara isn't a good girl and everyone is nice to her because of her mom. The list was a bunch of things that were like to the letter things to say to Lara to make her feel terrible. I was shocked and my mind immediately went to my sister-in-law. I felt terrible for doubting my daughter and I hope I didn't let it show on my face. I don't think Tony really knew what he was doing and I kind of feel bad for him in this whole situation too because it seems like sister-in-law was pressuring her child into becoming a part of this crazy rivalry that she had cooked up in her head. I probably should have done this differently and away from such a large family gathering but I just saw red and went looking for sister-in-law with a coloring book in my hand. As soon as I saw her I went off on her calling her all kinds of terrible things and waving the book around. She turned bright red and tried to turn it around on me. Like how? By saying I invaded her privacy by looking at the book. Naturally, everyone in the family came to see the ruckus and I told everyone there what had been going on. Literally nobody was on her side. My father and mother were appalled. My brother's face turned gray and he just kind of pursed his lips. Then he said, let's speak to Tony about this and called him into the room. 
The kids were also curious by this point and everyone was piling in despite our best efforts. My brother calmly asked Tony about the coloring book and he said mommy put in special instructions to help her feel better and he was trying to just help his mom. I feel for the kid but I have no sympathy for sister-in-law. She was using her child to put down my baby and climb up the social ladder within the family. I guess she thought that if Laura began acting up about being a child of a single parent I would also become stressed and lash out at the family losing their respect. I don't get it at all. Sister-in-law burst into tears after Tony said that and went on a massive outburst. She said that she doesn't feel like she fits in here in this small town because everybody already knows everybody else and isn't that open to making new friends. She also feels like the family is always waiting on me hand and foot because I'm a single mother. In her words, she said it's always about what you need or your schedule or your life, even if it's something we want to do. By this point, I had slowly begun to cool off and despite what she had done, begun to feel a little bad for her. I wasn't just going to shake hands and call it even though because I realized that Laura was probably made to feel terrible. Sister-in-law, brother, Tony and most of our extended family left after this as the mood had been really spoiled, obviously. I sat down with mom and dad and talked about what we could do about this whole situation. From what we saw of sister-in-law's outburst, it's clear that she's also been miserable here and that made her act in a really unreasonable way. I put down my ultimatum. Sister-in-law needs to apologize to Laura, not just me, and also seek therapy. From our end, I guess we would try and make her feel more welcome in the family. I started feeling bad about the way I blew up at her in front of everyone. Uncles, aunts, a sizable chunk of our extended family and it definitely won't help sister-in-law fit in with the family. I will try and explain her side of the story to people when I can, but is that really going to be enough? Ada for being so aggressive in front of everyone instead of pulling her aside and discussing it with her first? Our update one. So I spoke to my brother and sister-in-law about my demands. She has agreed to go to therapy about her feelings of alienation and apologize to me when I went over to their house. My brother is also shocked at her behavior and I think they'll be going to counseling too. To apologize to Laura, she took her and Tony out to an amusement park with me and wholeheartedly told Laura that Tony isn't to blame and that Auntie Sandra told Tony to be mean because she was feeling upset. I mean, props to her for willing to take the blame and trying to mend the relationship between Laura and Tony. They're kids, so they're already back to being friends and I hope it doesn't affect them in the future. Update 2 It's been a few months and sister-in-law has improved a lot. She's taken the initiative to get to know me and I've introduced her to my mutual friends to make her feel more at home. However, the extended family hasn't forgiven sister-in-law and spread a lot of rumors, which is part of the reason they still exclude her. Sister-in-law kind of bears it and makes it out as something she deserves, but to be honest, I'm thinking of calling a family meeting without sister-in-law and telling everyone about how she's learned from her mistakes so we can move forward as a unit. NTA. I would have probably reacted in the same way if someone had been treating my daughter like that. To be honest, I had zero hope for your sister-in-law to improve, but it's positive to see that she is learning from her mistake and especially how nicely she apologized to Laura. Nah. I mean, yes, yeah, sister-in-law is ta, but the context you've provided does make me lean toward nah. I also moved a long way for my ex-husband and his family wasn't welcoming at all. It does seem like you guys are figuring out something together and it's sweet to see. Kudos to you for actually offering her a helping hand because I don't think I would have done that lol. Next story. 23 male. My girlfriend 25 female told me that her brother's wife asked if she would be willing to be their surrogate since the wife can no longer have kids. My girlfriend and I have been dating for two years but don't live together because we can't afford it. We both love being at home with our parents but see each other regularly. Her brother and wife, on the other hand, live in their own home just up the street. The topic of us having kids has come up a few times. I grew up relatively poor and I told her that I'd be willing to have a child once we're financially stable because I don't want my kids to suffer for basic needs as I did. I'd like to think that's fair and reasonable. So when my girlfriend talked to me about this and asked for my opinion, I asked her what she wants to do. She said that she's willing to do it because she enjoys being pregnant. She had a baby in high school but gave it up for adoption. Different story but it's an open adoption and she visits her child regularly. And since I don't want to give her a baby anytime soon she thinks it'll be fun. I looked at her a bit taken aback because it's not that I don't want a baby. I just want to be able to financially support my child. Ultimately I told her it's her body, her family and her decision in the end. I also told her she shouldn't expect me to be at her side 247 during the pregnancy. This is where I feel I was in awe. My girlfriend was a little upset about it and asked me to clarify. I'm in college and I work, so I don't necessarily have time to take care of her with a baby that isn't mine. Yes, I will help when I can, but I feel like since the brother and wife want her to carry their baby, they should be the ones taking care of her 247. And since they live down the street, it's less stress on them. Obviously, if this was my baby, I'd drop everything to accommodate her. I'd be by her side 258. She would be the only thing I would pay attention to. 
I personally feel since this baby is in no way going to be related to me and it's not going to live with me I shouldn't have to be the one to be at my girlfriend's side 247. Again I agreed to help whenever I could because at the end she is my girlfriend and I love her dearly. But this baby isn't mine and I'm not going to love it. My girlfriend ended up agreeing with me and told her brother my thoughts. I guess they didn't take too kindly to my perspective because they never brought it up again after that. My girlfriend was a little upset about it because she was looking forward to being pregnant again but ultimately agreed with my point of view. I feel bad because I know how much she wants a baby but I didn't think it was fair to suck me into the world of parenthood when in the end results the baby wasn't even going to be mine. So, am I the AH? For not wanting to take care of my pregnant girlfriend when the baby isn't going to be ours? NTA. Since she lives with her parents and her brother and sister-in-law, living in the same street she should ask them for help. You have nothing to do with her being pregnant, so she should not expect you to help her. I don't get her brother's reaction though, what were he and his wife expecting? That since you're the one dating her you would help out with her pregnancy and be her driver to and from appointments, pay for doctor's visits a tea set? They were the ones who were going to be the parents so they should be more involved with the whole pregnancy thing and not expect you to do anything since it would indeed not be your baby. Your girlfriend should be happy that they dropped the subject of surrogacy because clearly her brother and sister-in-law hadn't thought about everything. NTA, you were honest about what your level of support would be. It was reasonable to expect that the parents would be the surrogate's primary support system. Next story. I'm getting married next week to a man who I really don't deserve. Some background on me. I have limited mobility and am incontinent, both of which I'm in control of, and while I have to take some precautions, I try not to let them limit me at all. I've had these issues for well over half my life, and pretty much all of my sister's life. Last year, my sister and I had a falling out. While she was a guest in my home with her triplets for ostensibly a longish stay, she threw my kindness back at me, outed my incontinence to her triplets, then age three, giving them a cruel nickname to use for me in order to scare them into toilet training. This did not have the intended result and basically accused me of playing on my issues for sympathy and special treatment when it was clearly no big deal. Thus, while deliberately disregarding the one simple request I made to accommodate my issues, this eventually got resolved after a few months by her delivering what I felt was an adequate apology and much mediation by our family. It so since we were back on friendly terms I invited her to my wedding and she accepted. I invited her kids too because I adore them and a wedding is better when there are kids running around hyped on sugar. Uh, everything has been good. On the date of my wedding I will be about seven months pregnant and it looks like I'm not completely exempt from my family's tradition of multiple births. I'm the only singlet out of seven. In more recent weeks the toll of carrying the children is starting to cause me additional issues. I'm using a wheelchair 90% of the time because I just can't handle the train of walking more than a few feet easily and although we are all pretty healthy my doctors are completely taking care of me and are amazing. Anyway that's all background. My sister picked yesterday when I'm having some final alterations to my dress to make it easier for my size and mobility. My dress gets caught in my wheels. To again drag up how I'm playing on my disability and pregnancy for sympathy and how it's easier for me because she didn't have a partner to help her when she was pregnant. I kind of reached my limit when she made a comment about how my life was so easy and that I only complain. So I told her that she was no longer welcome at the wedding. I didn't want to see her there and I don't even break a sweat. We then argued some more since she was upset. She bought a gift for us and a new dress for the kids at TCTC etc. and now they're uninvited. My retort before I drove off was that my nieces were of course invited to their aunt's wedding as long as their b-word mother wasn't there. I said a lot of stuff in the argument that I regret but I just want my wedding to be a good day. She texted me a dozen times and tried calling trying to apologize but I'm not sure I want to hear it. Does this make me in awe? Having someone in your life who is constantly envious and resentful is soul-crushing and frankly exhausting. You have every right to have a happy stress-free wedding. If that means not having your spiteful sister there, so be it. NTA, NTA you got tired of someone mocking things you have to deal with every day. Someone who is supposed to be family and decided not to bring the raging drama llama to your happiest day. No issues there, people will defend her because people always seem to defend HIS when someone stands up to them. I say don't give in because she's the one who blew her second chance. Actions have consequences. Next story I've been married since August 2023. Husband and I start dating in August 2022. I've always made more money than my husband, however, he was always financially sound and forward, so I thought he told me he didn't like how much I worked, have my own business, and that he felt it would threaten our marriage. So we decided that I'd do the stay-at-home thing so he can feel more comfortable. I made arrangements to have some employees slash family step up to help run my business so I can stay at home. About a month into the stay-at-home thing, I found out that he is over $125,000 in debt and only makes $4,750 a month. He was not honest when we spoke about our finances before we got married. 
he was just living off of credit cards and trying to keep up with me. A to give context, we live in Los Angeles. I'm from here, he's not. My husband is 36 and I'm 26. He is a school official and I own a medical care business. When we were getting married, I didn't have many clients, business is young, and I was waiting for some state contracts to come through. Me running my own medical care has me working most of the days of the week for long hours daily. His job demands long hours too, so we enjoyed finding time for each other when we were dating. So I was disappointed, because I didn't understand why he made such a big deal out of me working and having me stay home if you knew you not only didn't make enough for two people in LA to live off of, but you also were six figures in debt. Before we got married, I was making around $12,000 per month, and he was completely aware and okay with how much I made. After finding out his financial issues, I began to work in overdrive to make up for the lack of money I was bringing in due to the stay-at-home stunt. Soon as I start working again, he start to throw tantrums like cry hysterically, throw chairs, back me into corners so I can't move from his sight, and telling our support system negative things about me. My husband told our pastor, my mother, and his family, whom I've never met, that I was lazy, entitled, and I get what I want. He told them I tricked him into marrying me. His friends slash family told him he was wrong, and we moved on from that. Then he told me that I need to start paying half the bills, which was not our original agreement. And after a lot of back and forth, I ended up paying half. Then he wanted to add me paying 100% of our utilities in addition to my half. I start paying the utilities. Recently, he's been having these outbursts where he's saying I'm not doing the household cleaning enough. I've always had a house cleaner, but he said I'm too bougie and doesn't want one. He said that he feels like he's being used for his finances and doesn't feel supported. So I created a job for him at my company, paying him an inflated salary to help him with his finances and debts. I asked him how much money he needed to make on the side to be okay and pay off his debts and gave him that salary. He accepted the position. He had the position for about three months and two out of the three months, he just sat on his work, which caused my company to fall behind badly. When I confronted him about why he wasn't doing his work, he just simply said, I don't get the role. It's not for me. I experienced some sexual harassment from an older mentor, and I was telling my husband about it every step of the way. And even idly, I ended up ending the mentorship cause, so felt it was too weird. I asked my husband to help me identify sexual harassment in older males since he's older, and I feel I need help. Why that? And he just replies, I'm not responsible for your daddy issues. I called our pastor to help and we had a break though, but just end up arguing and he told me that I've never had to work for anything and I'm spoiled, which is not true at all. We are both children of single mothers in fragmented homes, no fathers present. We used to take pride in our backgrounds having similar diversity, but now it's a different narrative. I'm a privileged. He keeps threatening to move back to Philly, knowing I can't leave LA at this stage in my company. We had a plan to move in a few years, and now that's out the window. I can't move across the country right now. We had a huge argument. He told me he feels inadequate because I'm beautiful and I'm not a happy enough person. He said as long as I'm not happy, he'll never be. However, I am the happiest I've ever been in life. In the midst of the argument, I was trying to put pants on so I can leave for work to avoid confrontation, but he started to slam the drawers in my fingers as I was trying to grab clothes. He kept taunting me to go smoke weed or go get a bottle you drunk, and I don't even drink like that. My vice is weed. I waked away. He threw my watch and my Bible at me. This altercation hurt my feelings a lot. It was a very odd night, so we just moved on after the tension broke. I've been hemorrhaging money, and it's began to affect the cash flow for my business. I've worked so hard to have this business, and I'm angry at my husband, because I feel like he doesn't like me because I make more money. Now, everything I say is an issue. He doesn't like the stuff I watch, the jokes I crack, he's having me pay off my own ring, he doesn't like the way I talk, he criticizes everything, and is very dismissive. I called and told him I'm starting to mentally decline because of the stress of this new growing business and our marriage, and that I may need to check into a hospital. He just told me he had 20 minutes to get ready for his meeting and hung up. We ended up starting couples therapy and we told the therapist most of this stuff. The therapist told him he's wrong and now he won't talk to me everything is awkward. We haven't spoken in days. I love him as a person, but this has been a lot run out the gate and I'm tired. I'm not even attracted to him anymore which makes me so sad than just very mad. Not that I haven't been feeling attracted to him, we haven't been having sex and he's very angry about it. I've tried to tell him I just don't feel good or sexy. He just says under his breath, can I at least get my dicks up? It disgusts me so I just act like I don't get him. I'm so lost, you guys. He is such a good person, smart, nice to people and loves a lot of cultures that I love, but I feel like this man has been completely disgusted with me immediately after marriage. Immediately. Now I just don't feel much and want to be alone. He's begging for things to stay the same and not to separate now that retiring is out on the table. His reaction is making me feel like an asshole. I just feel like way too much happened in less than a year and it's burnt out drastically. 
Everything he agreed to before we tied the knot has been forgotten by him. I don't want to be married anymore. Ata, edit. Thank you guys for your responses. This is not a troll I'm just dumping because I need to know raw reactions and responses of people who do not know me. Now he is acting extremely sorry and sad and nice. So it's just a mindfuck. I need to see what I look like to others on the outside because I'm definitely lost in it. So I welcome and really encourage you guys to give me your raw, true opinions and takes. Spare my feelings despite how much of a victim this post makes me sound like I am seeking for the hard truth. I need to read all of it and internalize it. It'll help keep me in reality so I can remember to understand why I need to make certain decisions. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.